Alright, so in this video we're going to cover the sequence command and we're going to review it down here. The first thing is we're looking at what type of expression to enter. It could be any type of expression, followed by the variable we're using, the start and end value, what's the range of the variable, and what's the increment between each step, and that's an optional thing. Now in the input bar down here, when you type in the word sequence, you're given a few options here. Notice that you can see here in the last one, the increment is included, and this one it's not. That's because the increment is an optional value. If you leave it blank, it usually sets it to a nice standard increment um, going up by one unit each time. So we'll start with a simple one here. For a sequence, let's enter in a, um, a point. Let's enter in points on the x-axis. So we'll go, we'll call that n comma zero. And then we want to define our variable as n. Now the start and end value could be anything. Let's go from zero to 10 and see what happens. Notice here, I'm assuming a little bit, right? You can see the points that we just set up. There they are, zero through 10. Um, we entered in the steps and we use the step function. Now I'm gonna open up my algebra view here um, because I think it's so easy now to edit the equation. If I double click this, here is the equation we just entered in. I'm just going to switch it around and see what happens. What if I entered in 0, comma n? Will it respond appropriately? The answer is yes. Now it gives us a list of points on the y-axis. Right? So it doesn't matter how we enter in our initial expression. But you can have a lot of fun with this, and you can see a lot of potential here once you start to introduce more variables, like sliders. So if I enter in a slider right here, and we call it a, it's, I'll leave the standard name, and for the range, let's just go from, keep it simple here, 0 to 10. We'll go by increments of 1. Hit apply. Now this slider can be used within the sequence command. So if I go to the sequence command, here I leave everything the same, but instead of going from 0 to 10, I go from 0 to A. Because A is this variable on the slider. Click OK. And now what's nice is, as I move this slider, you can see those points on the y-axis responding. You can see the sequence recalculating. So that has a lot of potential right there. And there's lots you can do with this. You can also, um, you don't have to do points like this. You can change it up a little bit. What if we did n comma n? Right here now, I mean, this is, this is nice because here what you're doing is you're changing the expression changing the input in the sequence and seeing how it responds. So you can imagine there's a lot of potential here for exploration in functions. Right here is a nice linear function where y equals x. And you can move this slider if you want to. Um, if we go back though, we're not limited to just points, we can enter in commands within the sequence. So for example, I might type in a segment. So here the segment command, we go from one point to the other. So let's go from 0 comma n, let me fix that, parentheses, 0, comma, n, close parentheses, comma, to n, comma, 0. So in other words, we want segments going from um, 0, n to n, 0. So for example, 0, 1 to 1, 0, and so forth. We don't need this anymore. The variable is still n, and we can leave in everything else. I think that's set up correctly. And here, as we change the slider, notice we're adding or taking segments away. So you can imagine the fact, you know, this command, the sequence command, has a lot of potential in exploring all types of things because you can quickly show the steps of a sequence by changing a variable. All right, hope this helped.